Mistakes happen in every movie, but something about the DCEU just hits differently. These are our favorite characters, and seeing the little details get messed up feels a bit personal, right? I mean, even the Snyder Cut features an error that only eagle-eyed fans will spot. I'm not saying this video will make you give up on the DCEU, but you'll start watching their movies a lot more closely. You know you can't do this forever. I can barely do it now. There are errors all over Wonder Woman 1984, which is why I need to start this list with the odd teleporting lasso that you need to see. Watch Diana sweep in to save these kids. I like the tension it adds when she begins to fall off her lasso, but watch her brace for impact. Yeah, that's the same lasso that she just lost. Cassandra needs to be rescued, so Harley comes in with this iconic look and reveals an even better outfit underneath as the sprinklers start going off. This action set is impressive, but the immediate aftermath caught me off guard. Look at Harley's clothes and hair. I know, it's hard not to see it now, right? Her clothes are suddenly dry. When did she get the tech that Marty had in Back to the Future Part 2? Zack Snyder spent four years re-editing Justice League to match his vision. I know it didn't actually take four years, but go with it. It makes this entry that much better. I will say, Snyder fixed a ton of continuity errors from the original 2017 edition, but there's one super nitpicky mistake that he did not clean up. Maybe he was too caught up showing us Martian Manhunter was actually Martha in this scene, but watch the coffee. It's steaming one second, then cold the next. Maybe spend less time working on the sesame seed next time and focus on the basics. Everyone loves to whine and complain about how trashed Metropolis got in the Man of Steel movie. The dude did not crush every vehicle. The bus numbered 6370 right here appears to get smashed into scrap right here. But boom, next moment, totally fine. Clearly, Superman actually has a secret power to randomly fix vehicles. And don't ask why he didn't use it to help rebuild the city. He only uses it once in a while here, guys. Yeah, I'm picking on Wonder Woman some more here. There's this moment in Wonder Woman 1984 where Diana begins to fly after getting her power back. She does it as a way of remembering Steve after she says goodbye to him for a second time. I believe the writers are trying to imply that this is the first time she's ever flown. However, go watch the first Wonder Woman. She flies in the final fight with Ares and displays that ability in that film. I'm gonna be honest here. I want whatever technology made this moment possible. Please tell me where I can find this software. While you were busy watching Diana click through the files on each of these heroes, I was checking out the amount of memory these videos were taken up in her drive. Bruce sends her a 24 megabyte email, but every video file is over 800 megabytes when she opens it up. I'm sorry, what? Where is the software that compresses these videos that well? I want to know, and I want it. As best I can tell, I'm starting to believe the new Wonder Woman movie just takes place in its own little universe because it makes no sense in the timeline. Remember, Justice League takes place in 2017, and Bruce tells Diana she needs to get back into the game and implies that she's been off the hero map since 1918. I get that she's hiding in Wonder Woman 1984, but she publicly addresses the country in the storyline's conclusion. Who would forget that happened? Washington DC was in chaos and the world nearly fell apart for crying out loud. You can say the Martha dialogue in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is the worst part of the movie. I don't disagree, but I think the granny's peach tea moment is a close second. The metaphor and imagery it creates are awkward and not worth picturing. Then we get a jar of what we presume is Luther's peach tea. I was too grossed out in the moment to realize the lid of the jar goes off and on in all the different shots. Is the jar magical or is Lex Luthor's diet super strange? Suicide Squad is terribly paced, and that's not a new thought. The dinner scene with Amanda Waller in the beginning introduces this nobody named Admiral Mackenzie that's only there to hear her introduce all the characters we need to care about for this movie. Then the credits called the guy Olsen. Okay, so his name is Mackenzie Olsen, apparently. But why call him Olsen in the credits like that? It feels like proof the movie was lazy and disorganized. Just call the guy by his full name, or change his name in the credits. I'm stating an actual fact because the opening of Justice League does show her moving incredibly fast all of a sudden. Whether that's a new power or not, there's a moment of ultra speed you can't even compare Superman to. So Flash is here running, doing his thing that we all love, but watch Wonder Woman reach for her sword with her left hand. 
Now when Barry goes back to tap it back to her, she's reaching out with her right. Did she switch hands in the blink of an eye? You gotta be quick to do that. Fun fact for you to take with you. The London Underground originated in 1863 and was more than well known by the time the First World War came around for Steve to see. Now, watch his reaction to the metro system in DC and how amazed he is by the whole concept. Uh, yeah, not realistic. He would have ridden on that tube at least once before that, and sure, the metro's excellent, but it's not incredible. I'm guessing he was only marveling at it to make Diana feel better. It definitely wasn't for the underground trains or anything there. We need more Black Manta in the DCEU. That Aquaman movie is low-key a banger, yet even it misses out on some minor errors in their continuity. When Black Manta takes this bag of gold right here, it's set right beside him. In the next shot, the bag is suddenly behind him. Odds are the prop people forgot to check where the prop was and it was shuffled around between takes. The great part is that not even an editor noticed the misplacement for the final cut, but luckily, it's not terrible enough to ruin the film. Snyder made a point of adding a scar to Zod's look at the beginning of the movie, so when the trial starts, you'd assume they'd make sure the scar stays there on his face the entire time. Mm, nope. Instead, this scar comes and goes like Wanda's accent in the Marvel movies. It's one of the most frustrating parts of the film. And now that I know it, I can never look past it ever again. Seriously, it takes me out of the big moments every single time. Holy cow, did I really almost go through this entire list without mentioning Shazam? I think that just proves how strong the work done on that film proved to be at the time. It holds up, but I did catch this one mistake they made, but I'll be real, you could explain it away. Anyways, when Billy Batson says Shazam for the first time, he rips his backpack. The next time we see him at school, the backpack is perfectly intact. I could see his foster parents fixing it, but I doubt Billy would show them. A lot is going on with Harley's look in Suicide Squad. That's without discussing the aspects critics hit on when the movie was released. One detail many viewers let fly by is Harley's nails throughout the film. I get that the world is ending and Harley spent a long time in prison, so her nails should be the least of our concern, but every other shot, they go from painted to unpainted. You'd think that that would be something they decided on early on and stick with it for the rest of the movie. Instead, it is wildly inconsistent with a no hope of making sense. I saw it move. See? I flinched, I think. Okay, I know some of you want to hear about Harley's shoes changing every other scene in Birds of Prey, but it turns out that's intentional. I almost missed Black Canary calling it out because the directors are actually making fun of that issue in other movies in the genre. 